Good morning, Myrtle Beach Shark Tea family. We're here at Ripley's Aquarium in Myrtle Beach, where we're very honored to be here bright and early this morning before the crowds is out. This is a really exclusive behind the scenes, even though we can't get too exclusive, but this is wonderful, this is awesome. This is Alex Mamin, thank you so much for allowing us to come in. Of course. And this is wonderful because we have shark, a shark tooth page, but we also want to talk a lot about sharks that the teeth come from. Tell us a little bit about the aquarium and how the location was selected. Absolutely. So, you know, everyone knows Ripley's, believe it or not. Uh, Ripley's started in 1918. Okay. Uh, so it was a long time ago, but Ripley's in 1997 decided, let's step out a little bit and dive into the aquarium world. Okay. So we opened in 1997. Uh, Broadway at the Beach wasn't really built yet. Okay. I've seen pictures from whenever they first started, and it kind of looks like just a marsh wetland, <laughs> which is wow. crazy to think about. Right. Um, and they decided that here it's been, of course, a good tourist destination. I know I remember coming up here, uh, I'm from Western North Carolina, and we came okay. here every summer, like three times as Absolutely. much as we could. Um, so they knew that this would be the place to do it. Wow, and this is a very good vacation spot. A lot of people are coming here. And um, how many biologists or divers do you have here? So right now we normally have about 20 uh, aquarists on staff okay. um, and then normally about five to ten divers. It kind of wow. depends on the season and the needs. <laughs> wow. Okay. And this is a very, very busy season. So as we transition behind this massive aquarium here, um, how many gallons is this? So this is our largest exhibit at 750,000 wow. gallons of water. Wow. So there's a, there, I like to, when I tell the kids about it, I'm like, that's a whole lot of milk jugs of water, you know? And, and it's almost <laughs> a million gallons, three quarters of a million gallons of water. Yes. Now, how is the filtration for this aquarium here? How does, how does the process work? So all of our tanks and exhibits are separated. Okay. Um, so none of them share water, except for this one in Ray Bay. So they oh. actually have huge sand filters um, that are backwashed kind of into each other because they're very, very similar water. Okay. Uh, but they are huge five, giant sand filters that now, filter this tank. Is the water pumped from the ocean being so close? Is that pumped in daily or is it just truly the filtration system? You know, the ocean, even though we love it here in Myrtle Beach, it contains lots of pollutants, bacteria, pesticides that we don't want our animals to come in contact with. Okay. So we actually do make all the salt water here in-house. Awesome. Um, awesome. So we get tap water, like kind of like how you would out of your sink. We add, put it through carbon, get that chemical filtration, awesome. uh, get all of those impurities out, and then our aquarists get to add all of those minerals wow. and salts back in. <laughs> now, I would assume there's someone that is watching that, is it 24-7 or as much as they can is watching the pumps? It's 24-7. Wow. So we have wow. an automated system here, but all the mechanical features are still there. So we have our LSS team that really dives into that, and our aquarists, they take care of all of the water quality as well. So if we have the pH is too high and we have to add um, acid or bicarb or anything like that, our aquarists do it. And I would assume that process of selecting someone is very selective, like very unique and have the niche for that. It is. So um, <laughs> let's kind of go to the sharks. Everyone is waiting for the sharks here. Of so it's kind of hard. We don't know what's going to come up next. But what are some of the species of sharks that we have here first in Myrtle Beach? Sure. So in Myrtle Beach, we have tiger sharks. We have great whites. We have big one is sand tigers. Okay. So North Carolina and South Carolina are known for their shipwrecks, and right. sand tigers love to hang out with shipwrecks wow. <laughs> and hang around on them. Now, what is the sizes that people can expect to um, find here in the Grand Strand area? About. 10 to 15 feet or what these guys are here? The sand tigers are about seven to eight feet long. Okay. Um, great whites, of course, are larger. I've been out on like the Sherman Wreck, not far off the beach, and okay. there's been like six huge tiger sharks swimming around the boat. So it really wow. just um, kind of depends. Of course, if you're near a dock or a pier, there's gonna be a little bit more sharks because there's people fishing off the piers, so I don't swim there, but <laughs> where you're gonna find a lot of fish, you're gonna find sharks. Absolutely. <laughs> And now what is this big guy behind us here? So this is actually a green sawfish. Okay. Uh, we actually just got her and uh, the male green sawfish over here. She's about 14 and a half feet long. So wow. it doesn't look that big, um, but she is very long. And we actually have a third sawfish in here as well. And this guy? This is a sandbar shark. Wow. So you could find those right off the coast here too. We actually find them a lot in the waterways also. Wow. Okay. So. When the selection process happens, can you go into a little detail mm -hmm. how um, the sharks are selected coming in to the aquarium? 
Absolutely. So he was right there. Sorry, <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> um, so the sand tigers, we actually get special permits for okay. um, to collect them um, very close to here in Rural's Inlet, South Carolina. Um, so we collect them. It kind of depends on what we need. So we're in with a lot of breeding programs, okay. and we are trying to push uh, being bred in captivity and managed care okay. instead of um, having to pull those sharks out from the wild. Um, so if we need a male or female, we kind of are a little picky on those okay. things. Okay. Uh, okay. But I think we were talking before, and we had Rip, yes. uh, named after our founder. Wow. Uh, but he was the first sand tiger pup born in managed care in America. Wow. Wow. And we had he just celebrated, celebrated his first birthday, so we're super excited for him. And he's the only one in the world born by artificial insemination. Wow, so. that's amazing. And when you kind of look at um, the feeding of the sharks, because um, I believe that's very important. Mm -hmm. How are they fed here? Is this like putting a stick, like a fish on a stick, mm -hmm. stick it in, actually going diving to feed it? Or how, how does that happen yeah. here? So that is probably one of the biggest questions ever at the aquarium. Okay. And a lot of people are asked, how come the sharks don't eat the fish? <laughs> and honestly, most of the time they don't. Uh, they're very, very well fed. We have three feeding stations on the top of the aquarium. Okay. Um, and we basically get a long, basically like a tong. Okay, yeah. It's very long, it's probably about this big. Okay. Uh, we'll put a piece of fish at the end, put it in the water, and the sharks know where the feeding stations are. Yes. Uh, they do get a variety of different food. Um, so sometimes it'll be mackerel, mahi-mahi, squid, bonito, um, they eat way, way better than we do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> They're always eating. Um, and then you get certain sharks at certain feeding stations. Okay. Now, okay. Is, is that something that goes on a couple times a week or just or s several times a day? Or? So that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1130. So people could actually come and watch the sharks being fed. Absolutely. And across from us, we have rays that are also the cousins pretty much to mm -hmm. the sharks. Absolutely. Um, now, when you deal with rays and sharks, even though they're similar, what is some of the differences? So this is our third largest exhibit that we have. It's Ray Bay. Um, it's 85,000 gallons of artificial salt water. Wow. Um, so it is definitely a large exhibit. Um, in this exhibit, we have lots of stingray friends. Normally there's about 30 to 40 um, in here. About to come right down is one of my favorites, the big southern rays. Um, so we have southern rays, Atlantic rays, uh, cow nose rays that are kind of doing the zoomies in the middle. Um, Spotted eagle rays, there they come with those zoomies, wow. <laughs> as well as leopard sharks. So you can tell a lot about a stingray and an animal by where its mouth is. So you can see that the stingrays, their mouths are on the bottom, so their food's going to be on the bottom. With stingrays, you can also learn a lot about where they swim in the water column by their wing shape. Um, so you can see the cow nose and the spotted eagle rays right in the center right there. Um, they have very triangular wings, so they're much stronger swimmers than those uh, benthic rays, like the southerns and the Atlantics that hang out at the bottom. They're more pancake-shaped. <laughs> we like to call them Roombas because they just pick up everything on the bottom of the seafloor. Wow. Um, so you can also, a really cool thing with stingrays is you can see that the holes behind their eyes, uh, so those are called spiracles. Um, so they're one adaptation that sharks do not have. Okay. Um, that I'm sure they wish they did. Um, some sharks do, like a zebra shark, um, but those spiracles allow stingrays to sit still, and those spiracles will pump water over their gills, whereas normally sharks have to always keep swimming. Um, they can do buccal pumping like a nurse shark can, but the stingrays definitely have it figured out with those spiracles. Wow. And I guess these guys are really, really truly bottom dwellers, huh? These they are. Guys. They love hanging out the bottom. Uh, there's one that just swam by that has a curly tail, yes. um, so she is definitely the most popular stingray that we do have. Um, she's a southern stingray. Um, the big difference between stingrays and skates is their birth. Okay. Um, so skates actually are born um, out of mermaid purses. Okay. And that's their egg casing, uh, whereas stingrays give a live birth. Um, so when stingrays are born, they do have a barb, uh, but their wings are kind of folded up over their back and their tail is over their head. Okay. Um, so they don't barb their mom on the way out. Oh. Um, and then after they're born, they're supposed to all unroll and ravel. Um, but her tail just didn't really ever straighten back out. Mm, so okay. she's definitely the most popular because you can tell her tail. Absolutely. Um, I don't believe she has a barb just because just because of her tail the way it is. So out in the wild she might not survive, but in here she is 
fat and happy. Right. <laughs> and these right. guys get fed on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. They're big feeding, which is normally about 40 pounds. Oh. Um, and then on off feeding days, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, they also get food for dive shows. Uh, guests can feed them. Uh, we have stingray experience. So basically what I'm telling you is these guys are always eating. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So they always kind of look like they're smiling too. <laughs> yeah, especially. And I noticed, like you said, everything is on the bottom, the gills. Now what is, and the two things by their mouth, is that like sensory, like a shark? Yeah, so they have um, ampullae of Lorenzini, just like sharks do. So if you look really close on a shark, sometimes you'll see it almost looks like blackheads. Mm -hmm. um, but it, they're jelly-filled pores that pick up electromagnetic pulses. Um, so that's heartbeats. They can actually... Uh, we actually have to have people turn off their cell phones whenever they stay in the tunnel oh. um, because they can pick up your phone pulses as well. Mm. So those pulses, um, they'll keep them up all night hunting for it, so we actually get them to turn those off. But stingrays and sharks are very closely related. Um, and the sharks can also smell blood in the water as well as the stingrays. Wow, wow. So they're definitely um, made to be able to find their food, but uh, the stingrays with those spiracles, I think, have a pretty good advantage. Yes. <laughs> I'd want to take a rest for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That guy's just, how, how big would you say? She's probably is? three and a half, four feet across. So wow. she's, she's big. And some of the stingrays in this exhibit, like the spotted eagle ray that's about to come down, uh, they can swim about 65 miles per hour in short burst. And they can actually get 16 feet from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail. Wow. Uh, in the animal world, the males are normally smaller and the females are bigger just because they have to um, carry the young. Mm -hmm. um, so our spotted eagle ray is a male, so he's not going to get quite that big. Um, and he was actually born in our sister aquarium in Gatlinburg, wow. um, Tennessee. So that's wow. one of those, we trade with other zoos and aquariums. Um, yeah. Wow, that's I amazing. I love this exhibit. <laughs> well, as we get the sharks would get diseased or sick, uh, what is the care like for them here? So the really cool thing is we record every bit of food that they eat okay. for these large sharks. Okay. So um, we know which food they like. Okay. We also know if they stop eating. They're just like us. So if I don't feel good, the first thing I'm going to do is stop, stop eating. eating. Okay. Same thing for them. So we know, hey, let's put medicine in their favorite food and see what's up. Okay. Um, we also have an acclimation tray almost right above us right here. Okay. Um, so that acclimation tray is where we can bring in animals. That's also where we put animals in. Okay. Um, so we can give them care right in their exhibit. Wow. Wow. That's it's amazing. It's only about a shallow pool. Uh, that's also where we feed Gabby the sea turtle. Wow. Um, but that's kind of like our care area and that's where we bring in new animals and get them acclimated as well. Wow. That's amazing. Um, now, how long have you been here with Ripley's? I've been here for 11 years. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, okay. So I used to be an aquarist. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just not a marketing coordinator that knows a lot about sharks. <laughs> <laughs> but you, and that's what I love because you have the passion. I do. You tell you have the passion, the people person, and well educated, and you're welcome. And when we look at a massive, just, it's an aquarium, but it's, it's an experience. It is, right? you know, yeah. we're, we're all about education here, but it's about having fun while you're doing it, Absolutely. you know? Like Absolutely. where else can you walk under 20 sharks swimming over your head? Or we're creating that bond between, I would never have seen a sawfish, right. you know? Right. Kids would never have been like, there's a 14 and a half foot creature that is right here, I should probably care about that, right. you know? Swimming right. in our ocean, so. And, and besides the sharks, you see amazing species of schooling fish you mm -hmm. can see. Um, is that selection process, how are they selected? Are they like live catch and brought in? Um, so this is supposed to represent our South Carolina coastline. So okay. anything mostly in this exhibit you can find right here. Uh, we actually do uh, collect some of these fish from the Florida Keys. We okay. get special permits and go down there. You can find these fish off our coast. You have to go a lot further out and a lot deeper. Okay. <laughs> so it's a lot harder to dive for them. Um, so we do, we normally go down there for a little bit. Uh, to collect some fish. Uh, we also trade with other zoos and aquariums. Okay. So being uh, that we're AZA accredited, which is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, okay. we're able to trade with a lot of people. So wow. that way, um, wow. so if we have a shark, like we collect all of the sharks from Rolls Inlet, okay. um, but those go to the aquariums at our sister aquarium in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, okay. and in Toronto. Okay. So, or one of our big um, spotted eagle rays, we were like, hey, he's a little bit too big for our exhibit, so uh -huh. now they're in Disney, you know? So we, okay. we trade with a lot of others using aquariums. Now, with that being said, mm -hmm. um, with the trading, 
do you all like? Because I think I see like the is that the leopard shark over mm -hmm. here? Yeah. Now, what is what is some of the smallest in the trading? Do you want to get something smaller sometimes or a larger shark? Uh, what is with that being said? What is the larger or the smallest? shark here in the uh, yeah. facility? Um, probably the smallest sharks are the leopard sharks. At our Marine Science Research Center, we also have bamboo sharks. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have them. We do a lot of outreaches here. So we would either take like a baby stingray or we can take a bamboo shark to schools and teach kids about that. Um, probably the leopard sharks and then we also have uh, black tips okay. that are pretty small still. <laughs> okay. okay. Now how large will the black tips get? Um, they can get pretty big. They're black tip reef sharks, so they don't get quite as big as like a normal black tip. Okay. Um, so they can probably get about four feet long. Wow. Um, but we also do have swell sharks too, which they are sometimes forgotten about and a lot of guests don't really see them okay. uh, just because they're very well camouflaged wow. in our Monterey Wharf exhibit. So it's okay. very cold water. Uh, okay. I call them the puffer fish shark. So they can bolt a whole bunch of water so they make themselves bigger against predators. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I call them the puffer fish shark, but they are the swell shark um, and they're in Monterey Wharf. So they're a fun shark that you normally don't realize that that's what it is whenever you're looking at it. Wow. Now, this is a question I know everybody's waiting for me to ask. How many and do you find shark's teeth just laying in the bottom? Do y'all collect them? Do you just kind of put them on a necklace? Is it more popular to find? We find shark's teeth all the time in wow. this exhibit. Wow. <laughs> um, so they're on that rotate, like the conveyor belt, just like other shark's teeth are. And yes, you can actually see them. So a lot of times if you look around the theming, mm -hmm. especially on the corners, probably right there, there's a million shark's teeth. Wow. <laughs> so I know I have cups of wow. shark's teeth. Of like white. Of white, beautiful, perfect shark teeth that weren't fossilized yet. They're they're white. Sometimes they're still pink on the edges from wow. where they're just falling out of their mouths. Wow. Um, we find uh, grinding plates okay, also yeah. in Ray Bay. So we find those. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll also find um, like old barb clippings. Okay. I have stingray wow. barbs that are super cool, but the teeth in here are just awesome. And most of the time it is the sand tiger teeth. Um, they're super prominent and they're yeah. easy to see. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you find the sandbars, and I've even found um, you can find the sawfish teeth oh, sometimes. Wow. So they're really wow. cool. Wow. Um, a lot of times in the past they thought that sawfish, their teeth wouldn't grow back. Mm. Um, but we had a sawfish that broke off one of its teeth and we saw that it grew back. Wow. So we got to <laughs> myth bust that one. Now, is the sawfish, are they or are they the uh, endangered species because of the uh, one time they were getting the saws cut off? They are. So sawfish are really closely related to sharks. Okay. Um, they're kind of a mix between a shark and a stingray because they have spiracles like stingrays, which uh -huh. sharks don't have. But they are in the Lasmobrink family, so they don't have any bones. They're all cartilaginous. Okay. Um, and that rostrum they did, they used to get them chopped off, they probably still do. Uh, people would do that and just let the animal fall, kind of like a trophy hunt. Um, but it is uh, illegal, super illegal, because these guys are critically endangered. Okay. okay. So. Now, uh, when people come as a first time guest, mm -hmm. um, besides the sharks, what else can they experience when they come here to Ripley's? So you can see a lot here. We just added um, our South African penguins. Okay. Um, so we have penguins here. Uh, there's a penguin parade normally every day at 1.30. So okay. you can just kind of see them model around the aquarium, which is super cute. Cool. Uh, we have lots of exhibits though. So we're adding Sloth Valley soon. So we'll have sloths, so hang in there for that. That's gonna be a question, okay. <laughs> All right. um, we'll also, we have octopus, we have sea dragons. So you can say dragons are real. Okay. Uh, we have a whole planet full of jellyfish. Uh, we have our stingray exhibit, which is probably my favorite. Um, you can actually get in there as well. Um, into the stingrays, you can pet stingrays, you can feed stingrays, and, um, uh, and you can upstairs. snorkel. Is it upstairs? It point? is. There's okay. a shallow section, so we can definitely okay. show you that one. Absolutely. Um, that's my, probably my favorite place. Absolutely. Um, and then this beautiful shark tunnel. Now, how long is the tunnel? It's 330 feet. Wow. Wow. So it is very, very long. You can even do sleepovers in here. We have a lot of camp groups. Um, or birthday parties okay. that do sleepovers. Wow. Instead of counting sheep, you're counting and sharks. I instead. guess y'all do catering too, correct? We Is do. Okay. We do parties, we do events. There's always something going wow. on here. So the, the, the opportunities are endless. And we just want to bring you into this wonderful world of um, aquariums and sharks. I think the biggest, Jaws, I think, was the biggest movie to really change the outlook mm -hmm. of sharks, you know. and when you think of sharks, they're big, they can be scary for people that are not used to sharks. Um, what is a safety tip that you can give us 
um, because we know, I guess, we've heard a couple great whites either washing up or a big one is here. Mm -hmm. um, what are some safety tips that you, that you can give us if they're in the water, you know, there's a shark is around you? What are the things that you should not do and you should do? So the one thing is you don't want to look like prey. <laughs> so you don't want to be splashing. You're, if you see a shark in the water, of course you're going to be like, oh my gosh, but you're not going to want to make a whole lot of, of fuss. Um, the big thing is, is wear a bright colored bathing suit so people can find you easier in the water. Don't wear shiny bathing suits. My mermaid heart is, it's hard <laughs> not right, to find a shiny right. bathing suit, but you definitely don't want like to do jewelry that. Or jewelry or Jewelry, right? shiny, anything um, sparkly. It looks like fish scales. Okay. Um, oh. mm -hmm. mm. Um, and you definitely don't want to swim near any piers. Um, so I know normally that's kind of like where all the hotels and stuff are. Right. You also don't want to swim at dawn or dusk. There's Feeding like towels. breakfast, lunch, and okay. dinner, you know, so okay. that you don't really want to be out during those. The, some of the sharks are nocturnal, some hunt during the day, but you definitely want to um, stay away from those times. Okay. Um, and a big thing with sharks is sometimes it's their vision. So I know with the sand tigers, um, if you've ever had a staring contest and you're at the very end and your vision kind of gets blurry and you're like really, really trying hard, that's kind of how their vision works for sand tigers. Um, so whenever we dive in there, we actually have these um, long PVC poles and they just have uh, black and white stripes on them. So if a shark comes to us, we just go like this and they're like, oh, something's there. Otherwise, if I were to just drop something in front of them, they'll snap. Because that's the way their vision works. They're like, oh, something there, let's do this. So just about it's like just a, reaction. About like an alligator feeling the tongue, Yes, right? so it's just like, oh, I need to snap this. Yeah. But if they're like, hey, I'm here, then they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, and they swim the other way. And are sharks naturally aggressive? No. So it's... They're hungry. If they're hungry and they're like, oh, this looks like a nice turtle or this looks like a seal, then that's what they're going to try and go after. And I think the better word would be curious, yes. right? Not, a, a curious. Not aggressive, they're just curious. And I think if a shark bites, it realizes I don't like the taste. Right? They're right? like going to take one bite and be like, ew, <laughs> you're right. not a turtle. And unfortunately, <laughs> it might be a leg or an arm before they realize because yes. the power they have is yes. just, you know. So as we transition here, I think it's just amazing to, and me, I, I've, I've come here myself close to 35 years. You know, you come as a vacationer, mm -hmm. you come as a, even if you're a local, you know, you come here. And, I, and, and what I've noticed is the professionalism, it's always clean, you can tell everything is taken care of. And that means a lot from the professional side of you because you keep wanting to come back, mm -hmm. you know. And we're going to also transition to a couple maybe quick areas if we can to kind of show you what she was talking about with the rays and we'll try to get a close up uh, some pictures of the actual rays over here but we'll be right back stick with us so one of the less known sharks here that we do have is our swell shark so i kind of like to call them a puffer fig shark because just like a puffer fish when they get scared or anxious they'll swallow a whole bunch of water or air same thing with the swell shark there's one right behind me they have very um, camouflage. Their camouflage is perfect for them. Um, they're actually not from the Atlantic coast. They are Pacific coast. Um, so they love hanging out in the super chilly water. So we're here with the rays from the top view as she mentioned. So explain to us, um, this is just an extension off of the main tunnel. This is an extension off of Ray Bay. The Ray Bay, okay, yes. Ray Bay. So this is still on that same exhibit. If your series has the option that they want to come up here, um, or not, and they can be pet up here, they can also be fed. So trying to create those relationships with um, guests in our animal world, there's nothing better than being hands on. Absolutely. So our stingrays are definitely one of our favorite touch tanks. Um, I like to say they feel kind of like a wet mushroom. Yep, yep. Um, so they don't have those dermal denticles like sharks do, so they're a little slimier um, than they are. But they're super soft, so guests are allowed to pet them. They also can um, feed them if they really want to. Um, so when stingrays eat, it's a little bit different than a shark because it's almost like a vacuum. So when they open that mouth, it goes just and sucks that right in. Um, but they can pet them, they can feed them, and you can also get into the shallow portion and swim with them. <laughs> and I noticed the water is warm. Are they accustomed to warmer water? Um, this water is about 74 okay. degrees, okay. Uh, which doesn't seem that cold, right. uh, but right. we're not outside in right. the sun right. and everything. Um, so that's what it would be like out in the wild. Um, so we try and mimic all of our exhibits to what their natural habitat is. So even though we get in here and everyone that gets in is like, it's so cool, it's like that's what the stingray is like. Warm, like that's their cool. Kind of you know? So, you, yeah. you think it is, and then you get in it and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. I need a five mil wetsuit. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, we hand like all of our exhibits off of what they like. Even if we have to get in a freezing cold what? tank, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so this is one of our favorite places at the aquarium. Guests here, you can see the scenery. <laughs> they know that they can get fed up here and also get some pets. <laughs> And you can kind of see just how big they are. You know, it's a little bit of a different view than seeing them through the acrylic and then seeing them through the water right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Our big girls, they know not to miss a meal up here. So. And I'm sure you can feel the suction like that you're mentioning about when you see them up you close can. and personal, right? You can. You can, you can definitely feel that. You can kind of see the difference between all the scenery a little bit better here. You can see those triangular wings. I mean, you see those triangular wings, whereas the uh, southern does like more of those pancake shapes. Right. It's all um, changed for swimming, you know? Now, this one here, the mouth opens like this? The mouth opens at the bottom, so they actually have like little shovels on the oh, front of their mouth. So that okay. way they can dig a little bit better um, okay. in the sand. Wow, I've never, I've never noticed it. Yeah, so a lot of people think that is their mouth. Um, those are the cow nose rays. It kind of looks like they ran into a telephone pole with that big dent. But yeah. that's the little shovels on the side. So they can dig like, wait a minute, I thought the mouth was. Yeah. Wow. And like you said, the experience is you really get to see what you might have missed if it's all over the head or up close yeah, to the person, absolutely. like the minute detail. You're right here with them. Right. This is one of our smallest houses. Um, I believe she was born in our Gatlinburg uh, Aquarium as well. So she's one of our favorites. Okay. Yeah, one of our favorites. We've got these big girls. Uh, the Southern Rays definitely are a fan favorite. <laughs> Just because of how big they are. But you can really see those spiracles now on top too, and their eyes are right in front of it. Um, you can really see those spiracles that allow them to sit still. So if anyone has ever seen like Finding Nemo or Finding Dory, Mr. Ray, the school teacher, is a spotted eagle ray. So kids always love that one too. <laughs> I've seen, I've been in the Florida Keys and seen one like jump out of the water. They're awesome. It's so crazy to see. That's They're amazing. huge. <laughs> There's no better place. <laughs> We're here with penguins and a special type of penguin. What species? So these are South African penguins. So they are also an endangered species that we have here. Okay. Um, you can see they're taking their morning baths right now. But we Absolutely. do have about 20 birds on exhibit. Okay. Um, we've had two chicks born. So we've had Edgerton and Zyler, their full brother and sister. Um, so we're super excited for them. They already have their adult feathers. Um, but these are one of the only animals in the aquarium that actually have their names on them. Um, so the blue band on their right wing are the boys, and the red band on their left wing are all the females. So these birds um, out in the wild, they live on the coast of South Africa. So a lot of people don't think penguins are like cold weather and you need to toboggan and everything. These are actually warm weather penguins. So they're, they're temperate, it's very cold in the their climate is very temperate. Um, it's about 65 degrees in their exhibit. Um, and they're, they have a lot of adaptations, kind of like sharks do. So they're counter shaped just like sharks. So sharks have that dark back and the light belly. Okay. Um, and that's to protect against predators in the wild or to just kind of sneak up on prey. Um, so when you're looking down on the water, they see the dark black backs of them. Mm -hmm. So they blend in. But if you're underneath and looking up, see you see the white the like the sun. Yeah. Um, so they're counter shaded just like sharks are. A really cool thing about penguins though is those polka dots on their bellies they're kind of like our fingerprints. So each bird are completely different. So our keepers, even if they didn't have the wing bands on them, our keepers can tell them apart. Now, do they ever shed? Or, I know they said they shed. So this one behind me that looks like he's kind of in through a hurricane. Um, <laughs> so their waterproof feathers are only very soft and they have a cream gland that they'll use to make keep like an oil on those feathers. About once a year, they get rid of all of those feathers and they get new ones. Now, out in the wild, they would not be able to hunt while their feathers are waterproof. So they eat a whole bunch of food. Um, they kind of gorge themselves on food and then they get really fat and then they lose all their feathers. <laughs> so if you see a bird here that kind of looks like this guy back here, um, we do take their wing band off because they get so chunky. Okay. Um, so he's going through the molting process. Now, do they do they want to do anything during this time? Are they like moody or do they kind of slow? They're just kind of sluggish yeah. just because they ate so much food. <laughs> it's kind of like us after Thanksgiving dinner, you know, we're just like, oh my goodness. And that process will last how long? Normally about about two weeks. Um, so they. 
they have a whole bunch of feathers. It's very, very thick. Um, those feathers are. So this exhibit gets cleaned and pressure washed about three times daily. Um, penguin poop is very, very hard. Um, so in South Africa, a part of the reason that they're endangered is because people were stealing their guano or their poop to build things with it because it hardens just like concrete, but penguins use it to build their nests. So you can see all along um, the back, you see those whole food actually did it. Those are their nesting boxes. Um, so if a penguin really likes another penguin, they'll kind of like take that territory. Uh, the really funny thing about penguins though is in the wild, um, they are monogamous. So they'll stay with the same partner because they have those outside forces. Um, in managed care, in aquariums and zoos, it kind of can be a little bit more like a soap opera. <laughs> so sometimes they switch mates. Um, Oh, well, there's baby Myrtle. Uh, Myrtle was born in our sister aquarium in Gatlinburg. Um, she's named after Myrtle Beach, so we got her here with us. And you can see how truly water is Oh, yeah. Yeah. And these guys get fed twice a day um, at 10.30 and 2.30. So it's another exhibit that you can obviously come in and check out. So um, I'm starting to kind of pick up for the day. But one last question, what is the speed of these guys? They can swim about 12 miles per hour in short bursts, and they can hold their breath for about four minutes. Um, so they're definitely made to catch some fish. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and they're well far enough away from the shark <laughs> uh, So we want to have the best birds and the best genetics to breed them and have chicks uh, in the fish here. So we just actually traded a one of our penguins uh, back to Gatlinburg and we got new penguins uh, to hopefully make this breeding position a little bit better. So we got their, their first skin, we look super cute. Uh, and this is kind of also our isolation area. So if we have new birds, we want to make sure that they don't have any parasites, diseases, anything like that. So all of our animals actually go through quarantine before they ever even come here to the aquarium. So our Marine Science Research Center, we also do tours there. There's an exhibit there that's, honestly, I don't even know how many gallons that shark tank is, but it's huge. <laughs> um, so all of the animals that we have to go there first, go through their quarantine, um, and then they'll come here. Well guys, we could truly, truly be here for hours. Again, if you're vacationing, if you're traveling, if you're a local to the Grand Strand area, even if you gotta drive a couple hours, come experience this, or if you're near the Gatlinburg area, the Sevierville um, area out there, please join us. And once again, we wanna thank Alex McMahon, the Ripley's Aquarium for having us here. And um, come experience it for yourself. Happy hunting, catch you all next time.